The UN report is now back, meaning it's completed and has been published on whether or not chemical weapons were used on the 21st of last month in Ghouta. Uh, there was an alleged chemical attack while the chemical weapons inspectors were there, and it happened very close to their proximity, and an investigation was ordered to see whether or not the, uh, chemical weapons were actually used. And it's been determined, yes, chemical weapons were actually used. However, the UN did note that it was not the purpose of their visit, not the purpose of their inspection for that particular incident, as to who actually used the chemical weapons. Meaning, we're not saying who did it, we're just saying that it happened. Now, I do realize that that was the point of the UN, was to only discover whether or not it happened, not who did. But really, we could have used that little bit extra effort to determine who actually used the chemical weapons in that case. And I believe this was actually done for a reason. Because now, because the UN hasn't said who did it, the US can continue to claim that it was the Syrian government who did it, when there's no evidence actually backing that up. However, here are some facts that did come from that report. Rocket fragments were found to contain sarin. Close to the impact sites in the area where people were affected, the environment was found to be contaminated by sarin. Blood, urine, and hair samples from 34 patients who had signs of intoxication by chemical compound provided definitive evidence of exposure to sarin almost all of the survivors assessed. More than 50 interviews with survivors and healthcare workers provided ample corroboration of the medical and scientific results. The investigation also determined that it was a variant of the M14 rocket that was used to carry the chemical weapons. They said it either had the original head or it had uh, a makeshift head. They also determined that the rocket came from the Northwest. Now this tells us a lot about who actually launched it. The M14 rocket has an eight mile radius. It landed in the Zamolka Ain Tamara area, which is uh, circled in red. The rocket came from the northwest, according to the UN report. Now, the rebels control the north of Damascus, which is probably Basra or Rukan al Din, or the white area. These two areas were heavily fought over before and on the 9th. The rebels are strong in the northwest of the city, heavily entrenched enough to require airstrikes from the government. This is near irrefutable proof that the FSA used chemical weapons. Given all this evidence, we can determine where the rocket came from. Not irrefutable proof, but damn near irrefutable proof. We know where it hit, we know what direction it came from, and from there we can triangulate you know, where it was actually launched from. It was launched from rebel-held territory. However, despite all the clues being there, the Western media is just not drawing the conclusion. Now, they did that uh, in previous incidents where it would make you know, the enemy look bad. But in this case, where it shows that their side, that the Western-backed FSA terrorists did launch this chemical attack, they're just looking the other way and just not drawing the conclusion that they should be from the evidence that's available. An important point to make here is the fact that there has been 14 reported chemical attacks. Now, Damascus, actually Syria, the Syrian government, was the one who asked that the UN inspectors come in and investigate to determine who did it. It was not the West who did that, it was the Syrian government itself. Now, at least two of those, the investigations began before the one on the 21st, which was why they were there to begin with. Those results are still not forthcoming yet, and this last one has taken priority over all the other ones. Now, I believe the media is not pointing these out or asking for these ones to be completed because they know, as the Syrian government knows, they didn't do it, that it was the FSA, and they know they're going to find that evidence there if they do do a full investigation into these other attacks that have occurred as well. So we can see quite clearly here the imperialist media deliberately covering up these facts. Not really so much covering them up, it's just not following the logical conclusion and just omitting things to make things appear a certain way. We have these attacks that are being investigated, there's no evidence. We do have this one that is being investigated. We know it did happen, all the evidence is there, but the media is refusing to point the obvious fingers. No one's even looking as to say, well, where could this have come from? Because if you look where it could have come from, then we would know where it did come from. 
So the Western media is clearly twisting this by just simply not asking the questions that it should be asking. It's not asking the questions that it would be asking were this the other way around because they know where it's going to lead, that the Western-backed FSA terrorists are the ones who are actually using chemical weapons. Meanwhile, they're trying to strike deals with the Syrian government to agree to hand over their chemical weapons, which they have not used as um, for a promise not to invade, which is false. And I think it's false for two reasons. One, like they're not going to invade anyway. There were all kinds of claims made to Saddam Hussein, all kinds of claims made to Gaddafi about not invading or not continuing hostilities with them. But they still happen. So I wouldn't take the imperialists for their word anyway. Second, I believe it's important that the Syrian government hold on to those weapons because they might be the only you know, significant weapon that they would have against a U.S.-led invasion. I mean, if my country was invaded by the U.S., I would really have no problem with just dumping a ton of chemical weapons right on U.S. soldiers. Or any, any military invading my country at all, in general. But it's also important to note that there is the demand that Syria give up the weapons that they haven't used. Yet there's no demand for the rebels to stop using them. No communications are being sent publicly to the rebels telling them, could you stop using chemical weapons? Or they'd say... If you're using the weapons, could you please stop? There's no effort whatsoever to stop them, who we do know is using them. There's only one, the only demands being made of the Assad government who is actually not using them. And all of this, tremendously hypocritical, now that we know that one of the biggest chemical weapon stockpiles in the world are actually held by the United States government. But other people aren't allowed to have chemical weapons. But apparently Israel is, because it has been revealed now that Israel has a huge stockpile of chemical weapons. I mean, this is a very, very typical two-faced hypocritical uh, you know, position that comes from imperialism. They are allowed to have all the weapons necessary, nuclear, chemical, whatnot, all for the purpose of carrying out imperialism. But nobody, like Syria, is allowed to have a chemical weapon that would be able to defend itself. Or North Korea is not allowed to have a nuclear weapon which it would be able to use to defend itself. It's the very, very typical imperialist position. And frankly, it's a very cowardly one as well. The people of Syria have a right to use whatever means necessary to defend themselves from the aggression by the imperialists. And that is real truth. So, to finish this, Yes, we know that it is the rebels that are using the weapons, not the government of Bashar al-Assad. This is another lie that's being told to us to justify the invasion and the murder of Syria. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share on various social media. And if you want, there's some other good videos here you can check out.